right, next up we have Tony Browning. Tony works in the Sterling Heights assembly plant for Chrysler. He's a UAW member and local 1700. Tony. Uh, good morning, everybody. Uh, again, I'm Tony Browning. I'm from uh, Local 1700, Sterling Heights uh, Assembly Plant in Detroit. It's in Sterling Heights, Michigan, but I'm from Detroit. And uh, I'd just like to thank uh, Congress in advance uh, because uh, I'm coming here to represent all the auto workers uh, around the country uh, and asking for Congress to, to get all the workers this loan, because we ain't got need of this loan. And I also, you know, I worked with the Chrysler Corporation. We've been through this before in uh, 1979. So our credibility speaks for itself. Uh, that's when uh, our cooker was at the helm. Uh, we uh, got a loan in 79, and we paid it back in record time, plus interest and everything. So that shows our credibility. So I'm hoping Congress will take this in consideration and uh, approve this loan for the whole industry. And, uh, and uh, like Frank said, we didn't fly in on our jets. Uh, we left them at home. Um, we, we decided to drive in a caravan, caravans and cars and trucks uh, to come up here to meet uh, you people today. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm a rank and file worker. I've worked uh, uh, on the line for over 34 years. Uh, people are getting uh, auto industry a bad rep. They saying we are lazy. Uh, we overpaid and uh, underworked, but that's far from the truth. I'm here to tell you, I've worked 34 years there, and it's very hard work, you know. When this is all done, uh, done and said, I, I would like to see us have a, a change, change job placement where people can come in and work eight hours and uh, see what we do. We work very hard. I think we are underpaid. And, uh, I'm here to tell you, and I'm here to tell you for the working people of America. And, uh, uh, last but not least, uh, again, like I said, we get, uh, the, the get the loan for not just uh, the company, but for the industry in a, in a whole, you know, for a living, where people can have a living wage uh, and uh, have better, better working conditions. And uh, with that, I'd like to thank you. Next up, we're going to have Bill Alfred. Bill is the current president of UAW Local 235 at American Axelin Gear in Hamtramck, Michigan. Bill, come on up. Thanks, everybody. It's a pleasure being here, and thank you all for coming. I just really uh, wanted to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, Employee free, uh, employee free Choice Act. It's uh, coming up. It's an important act that we need to uh, make sure it gets a lot of uh, airtime and play. It's something that will uh, be a, a very good thing for all new uh, shops that are opening and all non-union shops so that they can become union. It's important to make these shops union so that people can have a choice and get representation and fair representation by whatever union they desire. It's 50% uh, it's of the shop that would vote for that, and then that would become a union shop, and then everyone there would be represented. <coughs> they have the right to band together and get fair representation, and that's, that's the, the difference between union shops and non-union shops, is that representation that they, they, uh, they would be able to get from all the different uh, unions that, or whoever they choose to participate in that program. I think uh, also I'd like to touch a little bit on the, the, the cutting of the wages. I don't think that would solve the problem for the big three. I mean, as Ron Gillfinger said, these guys could work for free and not help the auto industry right now. The auto industry's bind that they're in right now is, is basically due to the, the, the markets on Wall Street, not the auto industry. I know everyone wants to blame that on them, and, and maybe they have made some mistakes, but. You know, you can't get financing, you can't buy a house, how can you buy a car, okay? That's just the long and short of it. If you, if you want to help the auto industry, help them free up the money, help, help the auto industry survive until people can get loans to buy these cars. You understand, this is the second biggest purchase that people can make. So the, 
it's important that they be able to afford it and the, the, the loan industry be comfortable enough with giving them the money to do it. That's something that, that has to change. We've got to support this industry until it can uh, right itself, until uh, the markets and the economy can, can turn around. I know we got new leadership in the office in White House. Uh, I, I think that, that that's going to help add confidence to the markets. I mean, already you can look around and people are making changes. Uh, people are people are going back out into the streets. They're talking about the new economic teams that we have set up in, in Washington. It, it's it's a good time right now. We just need to just survive survive the storm for the auto industry. And I stand behind the UAW leadership, Ron Middlefinger, all the people of Solidarity, the region, regional directors, and, and saying that we need to support the auto industry so that these folks can support the workers, the working class people for the UAW, and, and the, the largest manufacturing backbone this country is known. It, we, the UAW and the, and the workforce of the auto industry has stood behind this country during wartime. I think it's time that we stand behind them. And I think all of you uh, would, would, would agree with that. This company, the companies that are asking for a fraction of the money that was given to Wall Street are only here asking for a loan, not a free gift, not a free ride. They want to get this money to protect the industry and pay it back. This is not a bailout. This is a loan. Those folks from Wall Street came and asked for money for free. Didn't go to country clubs. Nobody said I mean anything about that. They're hitting these guys for flying in on a jet. I, I just didn't understand that. I mean, I'm seeing this all over the news about these jets, and these guys are, are out. For, they, they said what they said they couldn't even keep track of the money it was going so quickly. It's just ridiculous that, that the auto industry is getting tormented over getting a fraction of the money that we've given Wall Street with, with and it was a blank check. It was a walk in, take the money, walk out. I don't want to go on too much about that. It just angered me a little bit. Um, I think we should all stand together. I'd like to, to say uh, thanks to all these people for coming out here and supporting the auto industry. And I want to thank all of you for coming out and hearing what we have to say.